In this video, I'm going to be sharing how to dye these pillowcases in a pre-reduced indigo vat. Hi there, my name is Brittany. Welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome in. I'm a basket weaver and fiber craftsperson. I love spinning, natural dyeing, basket weaving, wet felting, and all kinds of other fiber crafts. And I share those here on my YouTube channel and my website, Textile Indie. I'm so glad to have you. Let's dive into today's project. To prep your own indigo vat, check the description below. I have a link to a video that I did all about how to do that, or you can check the eye up here in the corner. I have made it easy for you. All of my indigo content is combined into one blog post. You can find the link to that in the description below. To prepare your cotton fibers to dip in an indigo vat, you'll either need to scour them or send them through a wash cycle in your washing machine. I suggest scouring just because it ensures that you've removed all of the waxes oils, finishes, grease, dirt from your hands from the surface of the fabric so that it takes on as much dye as possible. For a full tutorial on scouring, check out the description below. I've done a video on how to scour your cotton fabric. So once your fabric is scoured, if you have left it wet, you can go right into the dipping process. If your fabric has dried after the scouring process or the washing process, then you're going to want to re-wet it. And we're going to let it sit in water for 30 minutes. The purpose of pre-wetting is to ensure that all of the fibers, the whole piece of fabric, is um, absorbent. It has absorbed water at an even rate so that when you dip it into the indigo, it will absorb the indigo at an even rate and you won't end up with a mottled texture or color design on your fabric. If that's what you're going for, go for it. Put in your dry material, but it will be more effective if you pre-wet it out before dipping it. Check your indigo vat to make sure it's performing at its maximum potential. I usually check the color, make sure it's brilliant green, that's an indicator it's ready to dye. And then if you haven't dyed with your vat in a while, give it a good stir, stir gently so that you're not adding too much oxygen into the vat. And then you can put a platform in the bottom of your vat to lift any fabric you put in above the sludge in the bottom. The pre-reduce doesn't have much of this, but it's just good dye practice. Then let your vat sit for 30 minutes to do its adjustment before you start to dip. When your fabric is nicely wetted out, lift it up and squeeze out excess water and then try to work out any folds or layering of the fabric. Smaller pieces are definitely easier to dye in an even blue because there's less fabric to fold in on itself. Open up your piece and slowly lower it into the dye vat. The goal here is to get it into the dye without adding oxygen to the dye vat. Oxygen at this point is the enemy of the indigo. Once your fabric is in the vat, we'll let it sit in there for 10 minutes. This gives the indigo time to adhere to the fabric and layers of indigo to bind into place. To lift your material, gently lift and squeeze close to the surface to limit splashing and surface disturbance. You're gonna try to catch any of the excess indigo back in your vat as you do this. And then you're going to hang your piece up to oxidize and you'll see it turn from the brilliant green to the dark indigo color and this is the magic of indigo watching that transition i like to allow my fabric to oxidize and rest for another 10 minutes before i rinse it this gives the color time to shift and gives me a chance to enjoy watching the shifting process I want to invite you to join the Textile Indie Clan by joining my email update list. I have a link in the description below to do that. You add your name and email address and I will send you a twice a month email with updates on my channel, my website, resources, new information and inspiration in basketry, natural dyeing, wet felting, spinning and other fiber crafts. 
Rinse the fabric out thoroughly in warm water. A little abrasion isn't a bad idea at this point because it will help knock off any indigo molecules that didn't adhere to the fabric. And then you can hang your piece once again and evaluate whether you like the color. If you want darker, dip again and go through the same process that we just did. The current color does fade as it or lightens as it dries. So keep this in mind when you're deciding what shade you're going for. Once your piece is the color you like, rinse it till the water runs clear. This can take some time, so be patient. And then we're going to put it in a pot with some water and one cup of white vinegar. You'll swish this around for a few minutes and squeeze the water through the fabric and allow it to rest for five minutes in this mixture so that the color just helps the color uh, stay put in the fabric and is a little bit of a finishing technique for indigo dyeing. Once we've done this, we're also going to do a boil bath. So you'll rinse the vinegar out of the fabric and then put the fabric in some water on the stove and allow that to boil for 10 minutes. And this is just an, another way to get the indigo to stick in the fabric and not rub off. Now that I've put the dyed fabric through a white vinegar bath and then boiled them for 10 minutes, I'm going to do a final crock test. These are dry and ready to use, but I'm going to take this paper towel and rub it on the surface. And what I'm doing is checking to see if there are any indigo molecules on the surface of the material and they would wipe off onto your fabric. And that uh, it's a good thing to do, especially if you're going to be wearing your fabric because whatever rubs against them will turn blue if there is an excessive amount of crocking. So if I were to sleep on these and there was a lot of crocking, I'd wake up with a blue face. Rubbing and checking for crocking is a good way to to decide if you've done enough processing of the material to clean away all those loose indigo particles. If the dye vat isn't ready to dye with and you dye prematurely or the um, processing, you didn't do enough cleaning or rinsing at the end of your dyeing process, then there can be bits of indigo on the surface of the fabric rather than in the core of the fiber. And so that starts to rub off. As I'm washing these through the washing machine, I'll probably keep them separate from other clothing or from white objects in order to keep those from uh, absorbing any extra loose indigo. Indigo does continue to fade slightly over time and um, excessive washing will start to um, disrupt the surface of the fabric and the dye in the fabric. So taking care of your pieces, hand washing as much as possible is a great way to maintain them and keep them in a place that's out of direct sunlight because um, that does start to fade the color. Hit the like button and subscribe if you found this interesting or helpful. And thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure getting to share my love of fiber craft and the things that I'm learning and have studied over the years and um, encourage you to do and try new things in the fiber craft world. So thanks for being here and supporting my channel. If you like what I'm doing here, check out my website, textileindy.com. I have more resources and you can join my email update list. Thanks for being here and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.